How's it going lads? Welcome back to the garage. Today we're going to be looking at this orange fellow here. So recently enough I was driving past an army surplus store. I rarely buy any goods from these stores but uh, I always kind of like to, you know, pass time, nose my way through the aisles. So I saw this fella for sale for six euro and I thought to myself, you know, for the sake of six euro I'll buy it. I'll bring it home with me and I'll see what I can do to it. Now, just by looking at the tool you can tell it's fairly low quality. Cheap plastic handle, uh, the edge profile isn't even symmetrical. And this was the better of the batch. I looked through the whole lot and this one was about the closest to symmetrical I could get. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to reprofile that, get it nice and sharp. Before I do anything, we're going to rehandle it. Now, I have a good bit of ash left over from just years of collecting it and letting it dry. So I think I'm going to remove the handle and put on an ash one, something like this. Now, I'm not too sure whether or not I'll char it or not. Uh, basically, charring is where you burn the ash handle and then wash off the outer layer of char. And that can you leave you with a black color like this. Now, that's very good for protecting it against um, woodworm and rot, but it also can make it more brittle. If you don't go too far, that's generally not a problem, though. You also need to keep them well oiled if you're doing this. Uh, another thing you can do is semi-char it, so basically the same process of burning it. Uh, but I just didn't go as intense and I sanded it a bit more afterwards. So that kind of brings out the grain. Or you could just leave it entirely plain ash like this fella here. I'm sure I have an axe about to play somewhere that I just left on touch if I can find it. So here we go. This is an axe handle I made a while back out of ash. And all I did was put a bit of oil on it. And uh, it seems to be doing the trick nicely. So I'll decide once the handle is actually done. The first thing you need to do is go about removing this sucker. So the first port of call was to remove the old handle from the head. So I threw the head into the blacksmith's vice there, and then we used a coping saw to actually saw through the handle and just pop it right off. Now that was the easy part. The next part was removing what was inside the head. At first I tried with a punch just to knock it all out, uh, but that wasn't working. They had some like hard epoxy resin thing on top. Uh, so what I had to do, I don't like doing it, but I had to pull out the power tools for this one. So here I am with a Dewalt drill just have a masonry bit on it and I'm just boring the way through it and then once we have two nice sized holes bored through the head I come back with a punch and I use that to knock off all the excess materials. So now that we've gotten rid of the handle and we just have the head on its own it's time to worry about our ash handle so I went away up to the loft where I've had some nice ash drying for about two years now this fellow was on top of the pile so I reckon this is a good chance to give you a quick lesson in grain selection. So when you're picking out wood to use in handles, you want the growth rings, which are these lines here, running as close to parallel as possible with the direction the actual axe head is facing. You can see there now, I've done it with this one. Now an example of a poorly handled sledgehammer is this fella here. And you can see that the grain is running completely perpendicular. So it's grand, it'll do the trick for a while, but the grain is more likely to crack along there uh, than it is to crack sideways this way. But what that means for our axe handle here is that we want the kind of end to be facing from this section here as opposed to like um, this section out of here. So once I found the section of this piece of ash I wanted to use as a handle, it was time to cut it out of the bigger log. So in order to do that I used a tool that's known as a fro. Now it's a tool not a lot of people have seen before and a lot of people ask me why don't I just use an axe to split them. With a the fro it's easier to be more precise and once you get the fro in there you can just kind of lever it and that'll pop the thing apart. So we have them all there now and we just bash the thing open and just like that we have our piece of ash ready to go. So obviously it's a very rough piece of wood at the minute and to refine it now we need to bring it back up to the vise. And here I have a nice wooden plane here set to take a fairly deep cut and I'm just using that to make this piece nice and square so that it'll be easier for us to work with. The piece was also a bit too long so I just chucked it into the bench hook there and just used the cracks cut saw to shorten it down to length. So this axe head used to belong to my grandmother's father, so it's been in the family for quite some time now, but I recently put a new ash handle on it there. Um, it was a copy of a copy of the original handle, which had rotted away. So it's kind of nice to think that this handle shape is kind of slightly evolving every time. Maybe some point down the line I'll trace this handle I'm making here today. Um, but yeah, it's just a nice shape of handle. Um, there's no exact measurements or there's no template of it. I just kind of eyeball it and... Uh, Yep, seems to be working for me so far. So there's a lot of curves in this saw, and in order to cut them out, I just have my tenon saw here, and I cut down to the middle of the curve. And then next, I grab a mallet and chisel, and I just cut in from the side until eventually I'm down to the level of the cut. And there we go, that's our curve. So there's a few curves on this, so just repeated that process a few times until eventually we could bring it to the spoke shave. 
So with the spoke shave here, we're just kind of going with the grain. So downhill into the curve. I'm trying only to make it thinner on the sides without going too much into the front or back of the handle. Using a spoke shave like this is normally one of my favorite jobs in handle making. It's just kind of satisfying. Everything kind of rolls together for you. Normally, I'd like to be doing this in a Cooper's Mare, which is a whole kind of contraption that you sit into and you basically use your legs to clamp the workpiece you're working on into place. And then it's a lot easier to work on with a draw knife or a spoke shave. Now I have one, but it's down in a shed I'm waiting to move into at the minute. Uh, so for now, we have to clamp it into our vise here and lean over and work like that. Uh, it's grand, but this can take a bit of a toll on your back when you're going at it for a while. Another thing I did while I was at the vise was just cut the slit for the wedge. So again, we're just using our tenon saw here to cut a slit at the very top of the handle. And that'll make it easier for us to pop back on the head. But more importantly, it let us drive in a wedge later that will lock the head into place. So we're nearly there with the handle. One thing I like to do before we're finished is just sand everything down. 60 grit sandpaper just kind of evens everything out if you have any tear out or uh, slight imperfections or anything like that that'll take care of it you're never going to get it perfect but uh, with sandpaper with everything kind of rounded over you tend not to see too many mistakes as well at the end i'm going back with the spoke shape here and i'm just kind of curving out the bottom just to make this part thinner here uh, so it'll kind of grip into your hand better lastly then i just came along with a little saw here and i'm using that just to cut out the, i think it's called the lamb's foot shape on the very bottom of the handle here so once we had the handle nearly done, it was time to start working on the head. Now, the head came with this horrible black paint film thing uh, on the back of it, I'm assuming for rust protection or something. I didn't like the look of it, uh, so I said I'd remove it. I started with just a chisel, trying to scrape it off, and you can see there, it doesn't look great at all. Uh, I tried then coming along with a metal rule that I turned into a scraper, and that kind of worked fairly well. Uh, but at the end, what I ended up doing was just sanding the whole thing down and... You'll see in the next shot now, I think it turned out fairly nice. So I gave the axe head a nice clean, it's looking great. The next thing we need to do is let inertia work its magic. So once we actually had the head on the handle, it was time to reprofile the edge. So I have the tournament going here and I have a little um, axe jig that I bought along with it a while back. Now, I really try not to use power tools as much as possible in my videos, but um, the profile on this axe was just terrible. So um, I would have been at it all day with a sharpening stone or a hand crank grinder. So this was just the easiest thing to do. Just I also took it to the strop then, which is just a piece of leather, and that'll give it a nice polished edge, but it'll also remove the burr that might have built up while we were sharpening it. So, I don't think I'm going to char it. I think I might give this away down the line, and uh, whoever gets it might decide they want to char it or leave it alone, so I'll leave it for now. But I'm looking for my linseed oil, and I can't find it anywhere. So, my heart is broken. You can sense its oily presence, but... It's nowhere to be seen. A while back some crowd gave me um, some oil axe and I haven't really used it since so I suppose it's a good excuse. Look how runny it is. But we'll see now, will it do the same trick. This is just called oil axe, I think. By uh, Walrus Oil, axe oil, sorry. So we rub that in there, it's, it's just not the same. So I'm sure it does, does the same thing, seals it, protects it, but ah, it doesn't even smell like linseed oil, it doesn't smell like anything. Also, I think I forgot to shake it. I just, a bit came out like a kind of bit, yeah. See, it comes out as like a gel. So maybe I put it on wrong. Good Lord. See, you wouldn't have a problem like this if you had linseed oil. They say you should oil an axe once a day for a week, once a week for a month, once a month for a year, and then once a year, every year after. There you go. So here we have it, lads. Nice and sharp now. I was just testing it out there on the piece of ash we started off with. And it's, uh, it's cutting away nicely enough. Probably make a useful enough carpenter's hatchet. 
I suppose only time will tell how well that edge will hold. I don't imagine the steel is going to be of the highest quality, so I, I wouldn't imagine it being very long amount of time before I'm going to have to sharpen this. Uh, yeah, I think this should go to show that uh, you should be able to go out buy yourself a cheap axe head. Um, I didn't use too many power tools here now. There was the drill and the Tormac, but um, most people have a cordless or a corded drill line around at home they could use to bore out the plastic that was still stuck in the head. And you can get by without the Tormac. I just... I'm in a rush for time now, I'm off up to Clare later on this evening, so I wanted to sharpen it nice and quick. Uh, so yeah, there we go lads, sound for watching, and I'll talk to you again in the next one. Good luck.